it's here the style maker fabrics uh fall collection is here and live on their website right now i have swatches of 80 ish of the new fabrics that i'm going to be reviewing today i'm kind of trying to help you guys through the buying process um, explaining a little bit about texture and feel and trying to match up different fabrics based on color and, and pair them with different patterns that come to mind um, and just really trying to help you guys design your very best fall wardrobe. Um, this season, the theme for the collection is called Autumn Elevated. And what that really means is sort of the comfort coziness that we've seen in the past two or three years but bumped up a notch. So you're gonna see a lot more richness in terms of color and also in texture, and then also sort of a little bit more of a polished, refined, sophisticated look to some of these. So whether you are going back to work or you're really just looking to still be comfortable, but look a little bit more polished while you do that, um, this is gonna be the collection for you. We've got a lot of bottom weights, sweater knits, a lot of really great fabrics to get through. So without further ado, let's take it to the table where we can start with our very first fabric, which is super cute. Okay, if you are new to these videos, each one of these swatches has an item number on the back. I do my absolute very best to remember to call out these numbers. <laughs> But if I don't, there's also a spreadsheet in the description box. You can click on that link, download it, print it, and follow along with me. It goes in the exact same order that I am going in right now. It looks like this, goes by color. You can fully keep, um, keep up and even make notes as you go. So it's actually really helpful. So I'm going to have this off to the side and I'm going to use it to do my own shopping. Okay, so our very first one is a soft, even stripe sweater knit in the colorway rose. Let me move all these other ones out of the way so that we can give this one its full moment. So really soft. It doesn't say exactly what the fabric is, like what the substrate is, but it feels really soft. Not quite like rayon, but definitely in the in that realm um, we've got beautiful colors here this kind of like deeper rose gray a lighter rose brown cream lots of great ways to match this up with bottom weights i think this would make a beautiful like close fitted dress even maybe with like a bigger sleeve i think that would be absolutely stunning so that is one eight four six three soft even stripe sweater knit in rose and as we go through these two, I'll be pairing them up. So if I find like a bottom weight that I think would look good with this, I'll be sure to call this one back out. That way you can plan entire outfits. All right, now we've got vintage rose print French Terry, also in rose. So French Terry, well, this is surprising. Okay, so they normally put the stickers on the back side, which leads me to believe this is the wrong side of the fabric, but that's actually quite smooth. And the terry portion, the textured part is actually on the outside. That is so interesting to me. I mean, certainly you could do it either way. This way is a lot more muted though. And I don't know, it kind of looks weird. Um, but to have the terry on the outside and this side be smooth, that's actually quite nice. Very different. So you've got this vintage rose motif. The vintage quality, I think, is more about like the mutedness of all the colors and less about the design itself. But you've got these little roses. They're very subtle, but the green really pops against this kind of like bolder rose background. And then, like I said, this other side is nice and soft and smooth. Um, so if you like garments with a little bit of texture, which I think it's nice to add to an outfit, um, a little bit of texture can really elevate um, a look. So again, we're talking about cardigans and hoodies and kind of like your basic sweaters. This fabric would really just kind of shine all on its own. So that is 17455 Vintage Rose Print in French Terry. Now we have Classic Ponty Knit in Solid Rose. They have, Stylemaker Fabrics has incredible pontiness. They always have, and each season they come out with new colorways that match the season. So this one is definitely our fall colorway. Um, I've seen a lot of ponty knits in the most recent um, 
big four pattern releases, both in the way of like Mimi G's leggings, for example, and then also in dresses and even some tops have been calling for ponty knit. So this one is really um, kind of lightweight. It does have a little bit of drape to it, uh, which is nice. It's not going to be like nowhere near scuba. I know sometimes ponty and scuba are interchangeable. This is not that. This is absolutely super soft, a beautiful drape to it. So it's going to be perfect for genuinely any garment. Um, whether it be a top, dress, pants, whatever it is. If you're making ponty pants, like not necessarily the leggings that Mimi G has, I don't know what the stretch percentage that she requires on that pair of pants, but if you're making like a pair of ponty pants that kind of pull on, but they look suitable for work, um, this would be absolutely perfect for that. I think it would even conceal some panty lines um, and it has enough weight to it that it would, it would create a beautiful leg line, but still enough stretch that you could pull it on up over your hips with a little bit of an elastic um, in your or waistband. So really, really nice. And if you're curious about these three, I'm not quite convinced that they all go together. Um, but I did remember like the drape on these two, I forgot to mention, but it's super, super drapey. Both of these are really lightweight and drapey, but these are a little too on the nose for me. Um, I mean, maybe if you like a monochrome situation, these two wouldn't be terrible together, but I think we can do better. So this is 18421. Classic Ponty Knit in Solid Rose. Like I said, this is a staple for them. They have it in 12 colors total. Um, and I think we'll come across some others possibly in our um, stack here. So that's the Ponty Knit. Now we have Autumn Floral Heather Sweater Knit in Wine. Autumn Floral Heathered, the background is Heathered. There's like a little bit of beige in there, I think. Yeah, the background is beige. Um, sweater knit in wine. So the background is a wine color. The heathered portion is a little bit of that cream. And then we've got really a quite stunning, beautiful floral design on here. Um, sometimes I think florals can get either too cartoony or too realistic. This is somewhere in the middle. Um, but you have these beautiful like corals and pinks and even like these yellows and marigolds mixed in as well, which make for not only interesting to the eye, but easier to pair up with other garments. Um, so this is a sweater knit. It is very lightweight. Um, it has quite a bit of stretch to it along the cross or along, yeah, along the cross grain and then along the selvage, the green line, not as much. Um, so yeah, really, really nice, really lightweight, really drapey. It's going to be perfect transitional sweater knit, not super chunky, none of that. It's got, it's really, really lightweight. It's super, super soft. Um, one, seven, four, three, seven on this guy here. And this with our Ponty knit, again, it's a little bit of a lot of the same. They don't look bad together, but it's kind of a lot. <laughs> it's like the purple people eater showing up. Okay, now we have this corduroy. This is a classic Midwell corduroy in Merlot, another staple fabric of theirs. They have 13 colors of this. It is a mid whale, meaning it's not the whale is like the grooves, like how big the grooves are in the corduroy. This is not going to be one of those big, thick, chunky ones, but not super tiny either. It's somewhere in the middle. Um, no stretch to it. So if you have a pants pattern, a jacket pattern, how gorgeous would this be? And even like Mimi's new moto jacket, something like that, it would be really, really pretty. Um, you could do a blazer out of this would be stunning. And then you could overlap it. Well, this one, this is very, they're calling this wine and these other ones have been rose, right? Yeah, this is, oh no, sorry, this is Merlot. And like, this is wine, so they're not, exactly the same, like not even close. Um, but again, with a monochrome look, something like this, but we'll do better once we get into the contrasting colors. But yeah, just a classic mid whale corduroy, 10904. Um, great for all of your lightweight fall garments. So, well, I say that lightweight, but you know what I mean, relative to corduroy. Um, so the jacketing, the pants, skirts, dresses, structured dresses, things like that. All right, next we have Moody, <laughs> Moody Marble printed jersey knit. 
um, in Cranberry. So, Moody Marble. So, I'm getting kind of like a shibori or a tie-dye vibe from this. Definitely, if you're going to, like, sometimes people dress up for Halloween and they put on a full costume. Other times, I know by myself, I like to show up to a party, like, on theme, but not, like, in costume. So, this, to me, reads very, very spooky, very, like, kind of creepy. And I guess that's what she means by the moodiness of this. Um, you could definitely wear it through the holiday, through the Halloween season, and people would be like, oh, it's a vibe, you know? It's like a whole feeling that you get from this. But it is a jersey knit that is quite sturdy. I mean, it kind of rivals the Ponty knit in terms of sturdiness. Um, it doesn't have a ton of drape if you want to compare. Like, this is the, the Ponty knit has way less drape, but this actually doesn't drape as much as some of the jerseys you might be used to. Um, it's got to be 100% cotton, I would think. It doesn't say, um, but I would think so. And then the back side is all cranberry. So it's the same color as the front without the black. So if you were gonna make a t-shirt out of this or a t-shirt dress or anything like that, where you wanna do the cuffs and the neckband, you could use the wrong side of the fabric for those pieces and the right side of the fabric for um, the main part of your dress. So that's really good and easy way to make an outfit look ready to wear is when you have the coordinating bands. Um, okay, Jersey Knit Cranberry, yeah. All right, so 18221, the stretch on this. It's still got a good stretch, but look at that recovery. It almost is like a rubber band. Boop. It's just wanting to pop right back into place. Great, great quality jersey. Love this. I wonder if we'll see this in more prints because this is really, really nice. Okay, next, our first plaid. How gorgeous. It is a rayon twill, autumn plaid shirting, and cranberry and black. So rayon is rayon. You guys know what rayon is, right? It's a you know, uh, organic type of fabric made in nature, right? Um, and then twill weave is the way the fabric is woven is the same as the way denim is woven. So you get rayon, which is lightweight and drapey, but you get it in a weave that creates a little bit more structure. So it's like the perfect balance of drape and structure. So you can see here, not a ton of drape. Most rayons will just fall flat on themselves. This one has a little bit of body to it, which is really, really nice. Um, it is still lightweight though. It is, you can kind of see the light through it. I'm standing right in front of a window here and I can see my hand through this whenever I turn it up. So maybe not ideal for something close fitting and also not lined. Um, certainly you can line this and it'd be great for just about anything. Um, or you could do a very loose fitting, like think gathered skirt situation. Um, and that would be really beautiful. So yeah, all of your kind of flowy dresses, but that you want a little bit of structure to them. Maybe they have like a big billowy sleeve or some kind of ruffle or flounce or something where you need that structure to kind of enhance that design detail. Um, this would be perfect for that. So she says it's uh, cranberry and black, but this black is reading sort of close to navy. Um, it could go either way. And then you also have this really pretty mustardy color mixed in. Um, I'm always a fan of mixing prints. So anytime I see a plaid or a stripe, I'm always thinking, is there anything that looks good with it that is a contrasting um, uh, print and we have not gotten there yet but this is it with the corduroy really cute the the cranberries are nearly identical I mean this one is obviously woven with a little bit of that black um, but they look very very similar so you could also make a flowy top out of this something with a button down maybe and then make you know an a-line skirt or like the no zip skirt would be perfect for this um, corduroy as well uh, no zip skirt by blue dot I think it is um, and then a flowy top with that so 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 cute and very that collegiate thing again I guess the colorway of this so I don't think that has gone away this season. I haven't seen it as much as I have in previous seasons, but the collegiate trend, um, this is hitting that on the head. I can see it with knee-high boots. So many, so many cute, cute options for this. 
Um, while I have the plaid out, oh, the plaid number is 18240. Really nice. Love this. Um, uh, we also have a cotton twill in a similar colorway. So you can see how good these look together. So whereas this is corduroy and has all that texture to it, the cotton um, twill is smooth. So same situation as the rayon twill. Cotton is cotton. You know what that feels like, what that looks like, what the drape is like, but it's woven into a twill weave, just like denim. Denim is also made from cotton. So you can kind of imagine this as a very, very tight weave, almost a chambray, but literally like no drape to it. I mean, it is just completely like nothing's happening on the drape side. No stretch to it either. Um, a little bit, a little bit along the cross screen, just a little bit though. Um, so yeah, weighty for cotton because it's that twill weave, absolutely no drape and just a little bit of stretch, you know, maybe like just an ounce of wearing ease whenever you make this. So think about, again, jacketing, think about bottoms, think about um, those kind of like structured dresses, like a denim dress, that this is what this would be great for. So, and just a really pretty rich color. So 18171 on the cotton twill. I think I'm just gonna leave these out here now because we're starting to get into these like cranberry type of prints that will probably all look really good with these, both of these. Even though they're slightly off, this is more purpley and this is more red or brown. Um, they're close enough, you know? So this is, where are we? Abstract agate or agate. I don't ever know how to say that stone. Um, print heather sweater knit in wine. So we had another heather sweater knit. It was this one remember her. This is definitely, whereas this is more browns and reds, this one's reading a little bit more gray and black. Um, but they feel very similar, very, very similar. Um, and this one does have that kind of burgundy cranberry wine color in it, which calls more to the corduroy than this, but it definitely works for both. Um, again, with the stretch and the drape, that's what you have. So a really nice lightweight uh, sweater knit that would be perfect for um, really just any kind of basic sweater. If you had a sweater that had some volume in the sleeve, just know that it is gonna fall closer to the body because of this drape. It's not gonna stand away as much. Um, but really pretty colors here. If you're more of like a cool tone person versus a warm tone person, this that would be the difference between these two. Also, I just kind of feel like these two go together more and these two go together more if you're looking to shop that way as well. Okay, next we have cozy polka dot print sweatshirt fleece. I mean, am I a sucker for a polka dot or what? And it's a sweatshirt fleece, so it's just warm and cozy. This one is actually pretty thick. I mean, that's probably a good... 16th of an inch, maybe even pushing an eighth of an inch thick. And it is soft. It is like minky soft on the back with this fleece. Really, really, really nice. And then this side is more of like a cotton feel. So it's not rough by any means, but it's also not soft either. Well, it's soft, but not smooth. Does that make sense? And then you've got this black polka dot. Now being a University of South Carolina alumni, I see this and I also think game cock game days, <laughs> but that might be very specific to me. Um, but it's got this little, like um, probably oh, an eighth of an inch wide circle dots. And then they are maybe an inch apart this way and three quarters the other way. So sort of not totally even, but not completely sporadic either, somewhere in the middle. So 18223, crazy polka, I'm not crazy, cozy polka dot print sweatshirt fleece in wine. Yeah, obviously sweatshirts, hoodies, any of that kind of stuff with some jeans or even like one of those like sweatshirt dresses, this would be perfect for because it is so thick. So thick. Okay, now we have marble dyed waffle sweater knit in wine mustard and olive so we did not get a we did not get a swatch that shows the olive but you'll just have to imagine a green in here as well 
I also, you, we'll have to go online to see if it's like a stripe situation or if it's a little bit more kind of just organic all over um, shapes. But you have this darker color here, which is very close to more like this one. And also, I mean, for what it's worth, this like pretty pinky purple is kind of the same as this too. But there are two different textures, so just keep that in mind. Whereas this one's smooth and textured, this would be two textures together. Um, but it's got the waffle knit, which we have all grown to love here in the last few years um, with all the cozy, comfy loungewear we've been making. I have a pajama set in um, waffle knit and I just absolutely love it. It's like wearing air, comfortable, soft, you know, all of those things. This one just has a really fun colorway to it. Um, it is kind of loosely woven. So if you do want to make this into something you wear outside the home, just know that you can kind of see through it. I don't know if you guys can see my hand, but you can kind of see through it. So really pretty colors though. And that is 18257 Marble Dyed Waffle Sweater Knit in Wine, Mustard, and Olive. Um, okay, so next we have a reversible fall plaid coating in cranberry and pumpkin reversible i kind of want to bury the not bury the lead i kind of want to tease you guys a little bit and not show you the reverse side and only talk about this side first <laughs> it is a coating so it is thick there is no drape to it it is meant to be a coat a full-on i mean for me this would be a winter coat but i live in north carolina southern north carolina um so for those of you that live in like Wisconsin or whatever, this might be your fall coat, but it does have those gorgeous colors of black cranberry. It's got the pumpkin and when the pumpkin weaves with the cranberry, we kind of get this like reddish orange. And when it weaves with the black, it kind of looks a little bit like green in a way. And then these cream colors um, on the cross plaid. Now the reversible side is solid. Well, on this edge, I don't know if they cut close to, that must be the selvage because it's not on this side either. Okay, so ignore that little strip. But on this side, it is a also a fleece. So think of like double knit. This is like a double fleece-ish situation. It is soft on both sides. You can use the black side for like cuffs and stuff, but it does still have some of the print coming through. So you can see like the, the pumpkin color coming through and you can also see some of the white stripes coming through. So just keep that in mind. If you're like reversible needs to be solid, this is not it. Uh, 18414 on this one, really nice. If you wanted to make like a cropped jacket, pair it with like some kind of dress, um, it would look good with either of these. Okay, next we have cotton, wait, hold on. Oh, this, uh, this one also comes in another colorway. I'm not sure if we're gonna see it or not in this um, swatch collection, but there is another colorway. Um, so then we have the cotton modal jersey knit in solid rust. So this is a, another staple of theirs. Um, they keep this cotton modal jersey knit in year round and just kind of swap out the colors based on the season. Um, so they have 20 <laughs> colors of this. So if you need a t-shirt, this is the way to go. So cotton is cotton. You guys know what that is. Modal is like a brand name of rayon. So this is a cotton rayon blend, um, jersey knit in a solid rust color. So we're gonna have a decent amount of drape on this. We're gonna have a decent amount of stretch on this. And well, actually not, not a ton, not as much as you would get out of a rayon jersey, but for a cotton jersey, it's really good. And you can see the recovery, kind of how it bounces back there, like so. And then on the cross grain, you get a lot more stretch going this way. Um, comparative to the cotton jersey that we saw, the moody one, this is much more lightweight than this. Like you can feel it instantly and there's also a lot more drape. So this one's just a little bit thicker and a little bit more structured, whereas this one has that rayon in it, which makes it nice and lightweight and drapey. And I, she's calling this color rust. 
I love this color. It is a perfect combination of like red and brown and orange kind of all together. And if you were to pair it with something like this, it kind of calls in a bunch of those different colors together. Um, so really nice there. This uh, cotton model jersey is wonderful for any sort of lightweight knit project that you have. And like I said, they have it year round and kind of just change out the colors. Um, so this is a good staple to keep in mind um, when you're just shopping for some basics. Okay, now we have mid-weight cotton. Nope, we have autumn wildflowers rayon jersey knit in black and cinnamon. Autumn wildflowers, which for sure we're getting autumn wildflowers. The background is black, and then you've got this like cinnamon brown kind of situation going through it. It is a rayon jersey, so this is gonna be the lightest weight. Can you tell the difference in a rayon jersey and a cotton jersey? See what happens when you blend something a little bit more structured and weighty in with the rayon. This has a lot more drape to it. It's also just lighter. So we've got light, medium, heavyweight jersey. I say heavyweight, you know what I mean, relative to each other. Um, and then this is what the drape structure of each of them look like. Um, so this one falls completely fat. This one has some kind of body to it and this has full body to it. And this is cotton jersey, cotton rayon, or cotton modal, and this is 100% rayon, okay? Your little lesson in blended jersey knits. Um, but this one is printed on, so the back side is, like, not the same as the front. Um, it has a ton of drape, as I showed you. The stretch quality is as follows. So not quite as uh, stretchy as the cotton one, to be honest, or the cotton jersey one but it does have great recovery. And you can see that as with all rayons, this one's rolling. So that is one of the things you'll have to contend with as you're cutting, but it is a really fun print with like really nice colors in it. This one is one, eight, four, six, seven. All right, now we have mid-weight cotton jersey knit in solid camel. So this one, is 100% cotton, no rayon blended at all, and qualifies as a midweight, which I actually would put that moody one in this category as well. They feel very similar. This one's just printed and this one's not. So this one's just for the season. This one is a staple of theirs. They have it in 31 colors. I have made many, many, many tops out of this and I love it each and every time. It holds up beautifully it ne and mine has never pilled. Um, it is a great quality jersey knit. Um, this one, this colorway is called Camel and it is like the rust was more of like that brownish orange. This is more of like a, you know what um, Chick-fil-A sauce looks like? <laughs> That is what this is reminding me of. It's like a little bit yellower than beige or taupe. Um, but it definitely has like yellow tones to it. My skin tone has yellow undertones in it and you can see that it, they kind of match. Um, so that's camel color. And then we have this uh, soft marbled sweater knit in cream and cinnamon. How beautiful is that? I mean, it looks like, um, you know, when you do that like drip art paint thing, that's what it looks like. But it has these beautiful like nods to like the rose and stuff that we were looking at earlier. Like how pretty is this? Do you know what I mean? Those look so good together. Were there any other solids? We just had our solid um, Twill and corduroy, but this is what it looks like with all of those. So pick your poison. It looks best with this, if I'm being 100% honest, but it does also look good with these deep cranberries too. And then if you wanted to make like a cardigan and a t-shirt, cardigan and a t-shirt, these also look really good together. I mean, this would make an interesting outfit. I'm not sure that I would <laughs> pair this and the <laughs> rose together, but they do all coordinate. So this sweater knit, I mean, it is butter. It is buttery soft. Like I haven't felt anything like this. Super, super soft. Got a nice drape to it, but still a little bit of body, just a little bit. Um, probably the sweater knit is what is contributing to that. The wrong side looks like this. 
I mean, I can't even begin to describe how soft this is. It is like a combination of like minky and velvet together. It is like, oh, it just feels, I just want to like rub this on my face, like cuddle with it. You know what I mean? So nice. Um, this one is 17440 soft marbled sweater knit in cream and cinnamon. Lovely. All right. Now we have a window pane linen shirting in cinnamon. It comes in three colors. And the number for that is 17896. And I'm also going to pull out the next one, which is the pinstripe linen in cinnamon. This also comes in three colors. I have to imagine it's the same three colors. Now, immediately what I'm envisioning with this is mixing these two together and doing some kind of shirt dress situation where parts of it are window pane, parts of it are the stripe. That would be so cool, so unique. It would not look like you were making this at home at all. People would wonder, where did you get that fabric? How did you do this? Like, it would be like magic for the home sewers out there. And then everybody else would think that you just got it at like a store somewhere. Very rich looking. This color is called uh, cinnamon, right? Yeah, this color is called cinnamon. It is very rich. It's like coffee with creamer in it. Um, and then this is like a beigeish white stripe. The opposite sides look the exact same. So if it was like a high low hem, for example, where the wrong side shows, this would be okay. Or if you did like an unlined jacket, this would be okay. These need to be on everybody's list. Get out your pencil and write down 17896 and 17893. If you get nothing else from this collection, this is super cool and this is like exciting and inspiring and I don't know, just really freaking, it's so neat whenever we can get fabrics that match each other, not just coordinate, but like match, um, because that's just really hard to do in, in, in home sewing, you know? So that's why you just have to snag this up. Um, they are linen, 100% linen. So uh, these have not been pre-washed, obviously. There's gonna be a little bit of that kind of like starchy quality to them still, which will affect drape. But you can see that it's kind of wanting to do a little bit of that draping. It is somewhat opaque, okay? And like, yes, this is a fall collection, but can't you see this in spring and summer too? Like lightweight linen shorts in this would look exceptional in the spring and summer, especially if you pair it with t-shirts that are like brighter colors. So these two are really, really good. Love these. All right, next we have variegated rib sweater knit in spice. This comes in four different colorways. This is truly, imagine all spice. The spice, that's what it looks like. Or like, yeah allspice. It's got the orange and the brown and the cream, like all of that mixed together. It is a rib knit, but it's a variegated rib knit, meaning the high, the raised level of the rib is wider than the valley of the rib. So this is like a quarter inch. This is probably an eighth or sixteenth of an inch. Um, and so that's what makes it variegated. The stretch on this is really decent, as with all rib knits. And then the other way, not so much. But um, it is some, yeah, it, it, because it's woven um, or knitted, I should say, it is a little bit see-through through like the holiness of it because it is a little bit lightweight version of a rib knit. Now, if you don't make this body, body tight and you do have like an inch of ease, for example, I think you would be fine wearing your nude undergarments underneath it. Um, but if you make like a body con dress where parts of it are, are going to be stretched out, it starts to get really sheer. So keep that in mind. The other wrong side looks just the same as the right side, except the raised ribs and the valleys of the ribs are the same width. I don't know how that happens. I don't, I don't know the science behind that, but that's just how it is. You can see here, wider rib and then a narrower one. I don't know. Um, one, seven, nine, three, four on this. Beautiful, beautiful colorway. It looks really good with this linen here. It looks really good with this jersey knit. But it also looks really good with like this rust color because it does have some of those like browns in it as well. So if you don't want to be like as on the nose monochromatic, you can go a little bit deeper with something like this. So imagine your turtlenecks 
um, your sweaters, all of that stuff out of this. Really nice. Um, okay, 17934 if I didn't say it already. Now we have plush rib sweater knit in pumpkin. 18464. Yes, 18464 plush rib sweater knit in pumpkin. Okay, so this, I don't know that I've ever seen anything like this. But it is soft, almost like a chenille. I'm getting strong chenille vibes from this, both in the texture and the way that it feels, the texture and the hand feel. It's got the rib knit to it, but it is a tighter knit than the one we just looked at. Um, and you can see when you spread them apart, it's a lot less holy. And it's this really lovely pumpkin color. So imagine more orangey than brown. Um, it's definitely got that deep orange, plus also like the Tennessee Volunteers <laughs> orange, um, both of those together. We have, you know, our plaid that had the pumpkin in it as well. So those call to each other really nicely. Um, we have this plaid here that had a little bit more yellow actually. Um, but yeah, this would be a lovely, again, turtleneck, any kind of sweater, something with like a, with a gathered sleeve, um, a, any kind of like fun detail, this would hold up to it. Um, it does have a good amount of drape to it for a sweater knit. Um, not as much as a rayon would, but it, the hand feel on this is just so nice. I, it's hard to explain. It's not like it's super, super soft. It definitely has texture to it, but it, I don't know. It just feels like silky in a way. I don't know. Just, I just keep wanting to pet it. Um, yeah, this one's really lovely. Let's see. Do we have other colors of this? No, no other colors. Um, the variegated one though, this one does have four other colors. Can you see the color difference there? Just like a lot more brown in this one. Like this one would suit my coloring better than the orange. Okay, now we have Japanese autumn plaid twill shirting. Japanese just means that it comes from a Japanese manufacturer. That usually means really, really high quality. Um, autumn plaid, which I'm getting like a muted color palette. So it is the pumpkin muted. It is the olive green muted. It is this, you know, ochre yellow, but muted. And then you've also got this kind of like a, a true blue, um, all mixed in to make a plaid. And then it's also the plaid that's like, I don't know all the names of the plaids, but it's the one where it's like equally striped, you know, not just not no variation in the the stripe of it all in the you know what I mean okay um this is a twill shirting so the twill weave is back right we've talked about that a bunch lately you can tell by the lack of drape here and it is shirting which describes um also just kind of like the weight of it and the feel of it you imagine like a men's button-down shirt is shirting fabric um, but this one is a, in a twill weave. Shirtings come in all kinds of weaves. This one just happens to be twill. Um, it's lightweight, but sturdy and structured. Perfect for button downs, collars, all those things that take a lot of construction and handwork. Um, this will stand up to that really well and also be really easy to press and sew and all of those things. Okay, next is a soft stretch micro whale. If I can get it, micro whale corduroy in the colorway brick. So, do you remember our mid whale? Is that what you call it? Mid whale, yep. And this is a micro whale. Can you tell the difference? It's very subtle, but it's there. <laughs> this one's mid, this one's micro. So this almost barely doesn't even look like quarter away from far away. When you get up close, you can tell, but it's also a lot smoother, much more velvety than the mid whale um, because the the whales are so much closer together, it doesn't feel as textured. This way it does. This way, not so much. The bias, not at all. Um, they're calling this brick. No drape to it, no, st well, I lied. Look at that stretch. So there is stretch 
I guess because it's corduroy, it's technically like a rib um, along the, yeah, along the cross grain. There's a pretty decent amount of stretch actually. So if you wanted to make like pencil pants or pencil skirt out of this, you would definitely still be able to sit down and, and be comfortable. Your waistbands are gonna stretch out a little bit. Um, so really nice. And again, this brick color, if you wanna go like monochromatic with it all, you could throw in something like that. Here is the pumpkin. She's saying brick and you're probably imagining red, um, but this is definitely more of an orangey brick. Um, yeah, it's definitely more brown orange than red, but still really pretty. The color is really nice. It kind of looks like when we mixed in the pumpkin and the cranberry mixed together makes this. So that's the micro whale. Um, this is a staple of theirs. They have eight colors and then in parentheses she put the plus sign. So it's eight or more, maybe depending on availability, depending on the season. Um, they keep this in stock regularly and right now they have eight colors. Sometimes they have more. Next, look how beautiful this is. This is a autumn floral printed organic cotton double gauze and camel. So autumn floral, we all can picture that. Uh, printed, clearly printed, the wrong side is not got flowers on it. Organic cotton. So think lofty, lightweight, goodish for the environment. <laughs> um, double gauze. So double gauze is two layers of gauze sandwiched together and then kind of like tacked together for lack of a better term throughout to create one fabric. If you were to separate these, which normally you can, um, you would see how often we are tacked down or kind of what that tacking looks like. This looks like we are about every inch or so, but the colorway of this is just so pretty. This background is somewhere between like a blush and taupe. And then we've got these rich oranges, you've got some browns, you've got some golds, and then you've even got this blue in here. So lots of really great colors. Um, this is the camel colorway, double gauze, tends to be very, very lightweight, but not very drapey. So structured, I mean, I'm hesitant to use that word structured because it's not, it's not stiff. Um, it does have some drape to it, but mostly just lightweight. So think of like any of your dresses that have those gathers with all the tiers. Double gauze is perfect for that. Um, also like baby swaddles and bibs and burp cloths and all that are made from double gauze. So if you have had children, you can call back to what that was like. That's what double gauze is. This one just has a pretty autumn print on it. 18066 on this. So you can make a dress and a cardigan. Yeah, all of these are kind of like in the same vein, even this one. None of them look bad, but they're all kind of in the same tone. This brown and that, this and some of this yellow in here, this and the orange, this and the reddish. So, okay, now we have the famous washed crinkled cotton in solid Dijon. This is a staple, comes in 12 colors. I have used this, sewn it, worn it. It's wonderful, wears well, washes well. Nothing bad to say about this. Um, this is the color Dijon. Uh, the washedness of it all just kind of gives it a little bit of a texture, gives it that broken in, worn in look. Um, I'm sorry, my eye just caught the next one and I, <laughs> I am, irrationally thrilled. Okay, let me get through this one. Um, so got a lot of texture to it, but it is still 100% cotton. So it's going to have that structure to it, right? And hardly any drape. And then it has a little bit of weight to it as well. Um, so it's, it's a good fabric for everything from tops to dresses to skirts. You can even do some very loose fitting um, pants or shorts. Um, and this would be great. I use this to make a jumpsuit and I, like I said, love it, love it. Okay, so this is 16960, but they have many, many colors in this. This is just the Dijon colorway. 
which is kind of like a mustard with a green undertone. Okay, next we have, look at this. Oh my gosh, Maisie, I'm sorry, Maud Daisy Dot Double Knit in Ochre. I am in love. I love everything about this. I, again, I don't know if it is the... 70s trend that I'm seeing absolutely everywhere. If it's the colors, if it's the fact that it's a double knit. So double knit similar to double gauze is two knitted fabrics sandwiched together and then kind of tacked down. Um, but I just need this in a close fitting dress, pencil skirt. Imagine it in like in like pull on flare legging pant type things or a cardigan like a long cardigan I don't know I can see it in so many different things um not a ton of stretch on the straight grain but on the cross grain you've got a decent amount with a really good recovery it does not have a ton of drape so it's pretty structured so think about like a structured sweater knit basically and it's got a beautiful pink plus that like Dijon mustard color and then this is like a taupey gray the background is like a green brown. I don't know, I just love this so much. I need a sweater knit dress out of this and some knee high boots and a headband ASAP. <laughs> really, really cute and pretty. One, eight, four, six, six on this one. Oh, it's just got so much weight to it. It just feels good. It feels rich, it feels expensive. You know what I mean? Like it feels like if you were to pick this up off of a rack, you know, you'd have all the weight to it. You would be like, oh yeah, this is serious business. Okay, next we have Atelier Brunette, which you guys know that is a brand. Um, reversal gingham, double gauze, and ochre. This comes in six colors. Oh, there's, a, there's another colorway of this one too. There's two colors of this. Um, this comes in six colors. This is the reverse side. I'm pretty sure I showed you something similar to this in the spring. So we've just got the quarter or mm, quarter inch, half inch ginghams. And they're meant to be mixed and matched. So you do like a button down shirt and you do most of the shirt in the big one and then your cuffs in the little one, vice versa, put things on the bias, all of that. It makes really nice looking, well made, well thought out, well designed, expensive, ready to wear-esque type of garment. Um, this is the color ochre. It comes in six colors. It is a double gauze again. So we took the little gingham gauze and the big gingham gauze and we sandwiched them together. This is the amount of drape it has, not a ton, similar to that autumn floral print. Um, that is double gauze in this really cool reversible print. One, seven, six, two, two. Now we have boiled wool blend coating in turmeric. This is a staple of theirs. They have this in 17 colors. Have you ever seen so many? color options for boiled wool. Uh, I have not. Um, this boiled wool is what it sounds like. They take wool, they boil it down so it becomes really dense. It does not have any stretch to it, but it is slightly lighter weight than some of the other wools you would picture. This is not something you want to do on an unlined garment. It is kind of scratchy because it is wool, but it has like for a wool, for a heavyweight fabric, it does have a decent amount of stretch for it. Um, and like I said, no stretch, just a little bit on the cross grain. Um, and just really beautiful, vibrant color. I mean, that just jumps out. I don't even think, maybe this is the only thing that's had anything remotely like yellow, yellow in it. Everything's been kind of like an orangey yellow. Actually this double gauze did. So, I mean, obviously you're gonna make like a coat or I mean, maybe some trousers. Um, if you live in very warm weather, you could make like a wide leg trouser out of this would be really nice. And then this could be your little top. That's really nice and fresh and bright still. You know, fall is leading into winter. Things are getting darker earlier. Adding a big pop of color is really fun. All right, so that is the turmeric coating 16963. 17 colors available in this. Next, we have abstract art digital print linen shirting in ochre. So 
consistently every season they have some kind of digital print linen shirting um that always looks very realistic the the print quality is very crisp i mean it looks like you're looking at like a photo um this is printed on linen shirting so again the same shirting we talked about before that was twill but this is made from linen instead no stretch to it but or no drape to it but remember linen is going to have that kind of starchy quality to it until you pre-wash it it is printed on and you've got mostly like greenish colors coming out green and like dark dark green and then creams and some of your oranges and browns coming through here as well um if you wanted to make a like a shirt dress out of this would be absolutely stunning like literally would look like Her carolina herrera like instantly um made us make a self belt out of the same fabric too so it all matches you would look like a million bucks a million bucks but if you wanted to make it into a skirt and you wanted like a sweater to go with it this one looks particularly nice together the other orangey sweater well we have the rust um jersey Let's scoot this over um and then the other sweater knit where did she go This becomes a little bit more difficult. Here she is. As we go through this and I have my little piles, which I think are nice and organized, and then, <laughs> then they aren't. So you could go either any of this direction, depending on your skin tone, depending on just what you like in colorways. All of these look good for different reasons. And I imagine when we get into the greens too, there will be a whole new stack that will look really good with this. So this just looks expensive. I don't know how else to say it. And it's a linen shirting, so it's going to sew and press super easy. It's going to cut really easy. Great for beginners. Um, just a lovely, lovely fabric with a really dynamic print, even though it's just floral. Okay, next. Oh, that was 18206. No stretch. Okay. I mean... If you want it to go a little cray, this doesn't look horrible. The colors look good together. I don't know what I would create that had these three things in it, but maybe this is inspiring for you. So take that in. Okay, so now we are turning the page here and we are looking at the Prowling Tigers Rayon Crepe. So our first Rayon Crepe, the Prowling Tigers are actually quite fun. Um, not as literal as you would think, like from far away, you might just think they're shapes. Um, but it is a rayon crepe. So we've got our rayon that's lightweight and drapey. Crepe gives it a little bit of texture. You can tell it also gives it a little bit of body. So this makes really great blouses or any kind of like blousey blouson type of dresses. This color in the background, we're in the green section officially. So this is like kind of like a muted olive um just really fun and playful right like if you have a personality or a style that is unique and playful this is going to call to you for sure 18165 no stretch to it rayon crepe nice lightweight drapey with a little bit of body nice and smooth feeling beautiful fabric and a fun print gotta love that Next, we have Scrolling Leaves Printed Organic Cotton Double Gauze in Olive. So this is the same printed organic cotton double gauze as the floral, which, where'd she go? This one. Same, similar background. This one tends to be a little bit more pink than this one does, but same fabric. Um, this one is Scrolling Leaves, so it's just a vine print. So if you like organic prints but not flowers this might be a good way for you to call in the nature quality of this what would it be F fauna it's floral and fauna so this would be your fauna maybe but this uh darker color is sort of like a some kind of like blue like a light navy blue maybe and then we've got your kind of bold green here but again double gauze same qualities as that other one i talked about in terms of drape um, weight and stretch. This one is 18068. Next, we have Luxury Soft Sweater Knit Heather Avocado. 
Luxury Soft Sweater Knit Heather Avocado. So I'm not getting a strong Heather vibe from it. Certainly not as strong as the background of like this one, for example, was a Heathered wine or whatever. Um, this is a lot more subtle in the Heather category. I mean, front to back, it does look pretty different. And also texture wise, it's pretty different. Like this one's pretty smooth and this one has like a soft kind of fuzziness to it. Um, I guess you could use either side really, but soft is key. It is very, very soft, sort of that buttery soft that I was describing for that other fabric. Um, here is the stretch on the straight grain and the stretch on the cross grain. Plenty of stretch there, but also good recovery. So just because a fabric has stretch doesn't make it you know, ideal. It also has to have good recovery or else it just starts to look slouchy over time. So this would be beautiful for all your lightweight tops. 18160. This is a staple of theirs and it comes in 12 colors. 12 beautiful colors. It is very soft, but it's got a little bit of weight to it, um, which again is probably the sweater knit of it all. Um, it's a little bit thicker, you know, um, this feels nice. This feels like, I don't want to say cashmere, but it feels good. It feels good on your skin. The weight feels good. It feels cozy in a way because it kind of like is like a weighted blanket would. Yeah, it feels really nice. And as I was talking about the greens earlier for what it's worth, this is kind of what these two look like together. So in parts, it looks okay. We can probably do better but it's okay. This one's avocado. Again, it comes in 12 different colorways. Next up, we have another rayon jersey knit. This is print mix patchwork. So I'm assuming there are many other patch squares. I don't know what they all look like. Obviously, I can only see what you can see, but we've got a polka dot and a couple different variations on flowers. The cool thing about this is that the flowers kind of overlap each other. So it does look intentional. Um, but it's the rayon jersey, which we've talked about, lightweight, super drapey, um, stretchy, I'll, I'll kind of got some serious stretch to it, but also good recovery. And then it's printed on 18324 for a patchwork rayon jersey. Rayon jerseys, I really don't feel comfortable making anything out of them other than tops. I wouldn't feel comfortable putting this over my bum. Um, unless it's like pajamas, like this would feel lovely as a pajama as you sleep in it. Like if you like pajama dresses, which I do, um, this would feel really, really nice, but I wouldn't wear it out of the house. I would only make this out of a top personally. Okay, now we have the Arietta Ponted Aroma Solid in Olive. This comes in seven colorways. This is the Italian version of regular Ponte. And you know, I should probably do some research to learn more about the differences, but we have this Ponte, and then this is the Ponte de Roma. So obviously it's Roman Ponte. This is not, um, just touching them. And I don't know if this is specific to the substrate itself or just these particular ones, but this one feels a lot smoother. Um, we've got stretch on the straight grain, stretch on the cross grain, about equal both ways and about the same amount as the regular one, maybe a little bit more in this one. Um, but just overall, a lot less texture to the eye and also the hand feel smoother. And, um, yeah, that's really the only difference I can see in them. I'm assuming this is better quality, but I don't know a hundred percent why. <laughs> Um, like I said, seven colors this one comes in. This olive one is 11809. Um, let's see, we've got this. That looks pretty decent. Where did our linen, here's our linen, right? Doesn't that look, that looks really good together. A lot better than the olive did. So you can do like a Ponte coat jacket situation. I have a Ponte jacket, I love it you can do, or like a Ponte blazer even. Isn't there one that's designed for blazers? The, hmm, I can't remember it. The, it's on the tip of my tongue though. You guys are all screaming at your computer screens. Indie company, 
uh, Blake, oh gosh, I can't think of it. Um, so you can do that over this shirt dress or you can make this into a skirt or I'm sorry, this into a top and this into a skirt, something like that if you wanted to combine these two together. Really pretty. We have lightweight cotton chambray shirting in olive. This feels very military, right? I'm getting a, like that, that military green color, but it also has like some variation in the color. It's not solid, um, lightweight for sure. Chambray, so you guys know what chambray is by now, but this is just green chambray. We've got, you know, uh, not as much drape to it. So good for like a shirt dress or something a little bit more structured, but it is 100% cotton. This is what the wrong side and right side look like together, which I kind of quite like if those were mixed, that would be really nice. Um, I'm not seeing any other colors listed for this one. So this must be the only one, 18143 really lightweight. I don't think it's going to have much stretch. No, no stretch at all. Okay. Ooh, this one's lovely. Uh, herringbone plaid worsted wool in leaf green. What I love about this is whenever it has like a bright, vibrant green paired with the sky blue, I don't know what it is about that color combo. I just love it so much. It's just whatever that is, is just calls to me. Um, but this is a worsted wool as opposed to a boiled wool that is literally boiled to come together. This one's worsted. Um, so for a jacketing, you know, hardly any drape, but it is pretty lightweight still. Um, that's what the wrong side looks like. But this would be so cute in like a cropped moto jacket. I know I keep going back to that or even like a wool blazer. Gosh, even trousers, all of the things. So this one feels a lot smoother than the than the boiled wool does. So you could maybe, maybe get away with outlining it. But still, I wouldn't want to sit on this, I don't think. So you probably still want to line it at least partially. Um, so you don't get irritated. You know, at least the sleeve, at least like through the hip area. Um, but the colors are just so, so, so fun. So herringbone plaid. Yeah, so it's also... It's plaid in and of itself, but also there's herringbone. So it's a combination of two plaids, really. Um, and I just love the colors so much. Really cute. Okay, uh, 18244 on this. This is abstract animal print in Lyocell Twill shirting in Hunter. So Lyocell is another name, name brand for rayon. So this is a rayon twill shirting. So we've got some drape, but not as much as a rayon, 100% rayon wood. The other, uh, was it a modal, rayon modal, or cotton modal jersey? That's what it was. It wasn't a twill, right? Oh, no, no, this one was rayon twill. Okay, so this is rayon twill, right? This is rayon twill shirting. Slightly more structured slightly more weighted and also they're both smooth but this one's like silkier even kind of has a teensy bit of sheen to it in some areas where this one is very very matte um very very like solid um but yeah so that's the drape on this no stretch no stretch at all and it's just got this really kind of deep green in the background and then this is black all the animal print stuff is black um, this comes in another colorway, two colors. So if you like the print and you want to see another colorway, go check out the website for that. This one is 17646. Next we have, oh wow, this one is, is this one? Wow, this looks like carpet. Oh, cozy reversible Sherpa fleece solid and evergreen. Oh my goodness. This comes in nine colors. Wow, okay. It literally looks like a carpet sample. It doesn't feel like one, but look at this cross section. <laughs> you know what I mean? So we've got this, wow, this is nice. This feels so good. Um, Sherpa on one side, fleece on the other side. So, and this is the colorway evergreen. 
Wow, okay, I don't, I've never even seen anything like this before, but I know that Sherpa goes into collars and cuffs sometimes in jackets. So could you use this for that? And then, or you know what? I have seen this. This is what all of those like half zip situations are. It's like a pullover. Or sometimes there's fully zipped too, or like a bomber jacket. I'm getting it now. But this would be warm. This would be like on the coldest day um, you could pull this out, at least where I live, and um, and be cozy and warm. But the moment you step inside somewhere, this sucker's coming off. So we do have some stretch this way along the cross grain, none along the straight grain. And it is just so soft. This little pile is deep, like thick, but also close together. Um, so it just creates like the most beautiful little feeling. It's like... I don't know, make it into a, to a bath mat even. <laughs> it just feels really interesting. And then you've got the fleece, which feels just like all the fleece you've ever touched feels like. 18470. That's so cool. I want to check out the other colors too. So fun. Okay. Um, next we have this rib knit, luxury plush rib sweater knit, also in the colorway evergreen. Same color. This is a staple of theirs. It comes in 17 colors. I made a, oh gosh. Oh no, what is it called? The tank top that everybody and their brother has made that has a little mock turtleneck on it. I have Lago tank in my head and I know that's not the right one. That might start with an L. Where is my brain today with the patterns? Very, very popular. It's a, it's a tank top shirt or dress and it has a little mock turtleneck. I use this in like a creamy color. Um, and again, I love it. It's held up really, really well. This one's super soft, but weighty. This has a lot of weight to it. Um, they're calling it plush rib sweater knit. So it's a rib knit. It's a ribbed sweater knit, a sweater knit that has been ribbed. So think of it that way. That's why it has so much weight to it. The reverse side looks like this. Really um, kind of smooth hand feel, albeit outside of the ribs themselves. Um, kind of silky feeling, but it has the texture of the ribs, which is also nice. It is like a true evergreen though. So we're not really going to be using this guy, which is more of like the olives. Kind of calls into this little area here, but not really anything else. And then if you wanted to pair it with some kind of bottom, like you could go the brown route. This is going to feel a very Christmassy. Um... And that's really all we've had for bottom weights. This is what it looks like with some kind of golden color. Very uh, college. What school would that be? Or an NFL team? Packers maybe? Um, but so far this like brownish color is calling to me the most. So if you have any, well, maybe this brick. Well, again, that's kind of Christmassy. But if you have any like brownish mocha colors in your closet, this would look really good with that. Really great for turtlenecks. Again, um, rib knit, close fitting dresses and tops. This would be perfect, even cardigans. So 18159, and again, it comes in 17 colors. This one's nice, this is a window pane wool flannel suiting. Wool flannel, okay. Um, this is the colorway spruce which is the color naming on this is perfect. Um, if this is evergreen tree, this is definitely a spruce tree. Um, but I love the subtle window pane. Like I love it a lot. Um, this is like a darker green, maybe even black. I don't know. Um, but the reverse side looks similar, if not the exact same. And it just feels so soft. Imagine flannel. Okay, you know what flannel, cotton flannel feels like. This is wool flannel. So it's like that, but warmer. I mean, it has a little bit of roughness to it, but not not even as much as that last wool that we looked at, at this one. This one is even softer than this. So this would be great, and it's lighter weight-ish. So you could make like a like a open front jacket, think of like a waterfall neckline. Think of like, a shawl type situation. Um, even like a wool skirt, I think would be really great out of this too. Um, maybe because I just filmed the new Simplicity collection. They had that skirt where you overlap it and it has all the fringe on it. I'm, I'm picturing that in this for sure. Um, 
so yeah, lots of options. You could, you could leave it unlined. Um, if you wear like stockings, that would certainly help. Um, or a slip that would also help and that way you could just make it super easy or you could easily line it but I don't know it feels so soft you might not have to line it at all which would help add to the lightweightness of it all I mean it's very it's for a wool for a um for a flannel um it is very lightweight what was this one called eight one eight two eight five one eight two eight five window oh it's a suiting okay okay that makes a lot more sense so yeah blazer trousers that's why i was kind of thinking of a skirt in some way because yeah you could totally wear this as any of those things Ugh, how stunning would it be in like a straight leg but crisp trouser pant this is really nice i like this one a lot this really calls to like my personal style and my aesthetic kind of like the cleanness of it all um, I love this one. So 18285 on that. All right, now we're moving into teal. This is the See You at Six, which is a brand name. Um, winter Wood. Winter Wood. Which way is up? This way is up. This is down. Winter Wood. Okay. Oh, yeah, I see the tree now. Okay. Uh, twill Canvas in Navy. So twill weave that diagonal twill weave just like denim but canvas so very structured um like a heavyweight denim so you could make a bag you could make like a boxy jacket um anything but it is very much like in the woods we've got white birch trees we've got whatever this brown tree is and then all this green foliage and I don't know it because this is this is the straight green goes all so does this tree just keep going down 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 I don't know that would be really interesting to see but it does have like the little mint with the like evergreen in it it's a little bit more teal than this evergreen is and certainly no lime green in it at all I was thinking maybe because of the mint we could use that but no um it's its own it's its own situation even the brown of the browns doesn't really call into this that well so we'll have to wait until we get into some of our more neutral colors but yeah bags jackets but it is going to be kind of whimsical i mean it's definitely a tree definitely okay next we have classic fine gabardine suiting in teal you guys have seen, they throw gabardine in all the time on the suggested fabrics on the big four. And most of the time I feel like nobody ever knows what that is. This is it. <laughs> it is, how can I explain it? It's like rayon in terms of hand feel, but weightier. So think of like rayon twill, but not twill weave. Um, fine gabardine suiting. Yeah, so this has got some drape to it but also a lot of body still. I mean, look at that. It's still keeping those folds really nicely. It's lightweight, but only relative to other suitings, you know? Like, I don't know, and it's just super, super soft. This color, this teal colorway is beautiful, but it also comes in five other colors. Um, in terms of making it for a suit specifically, because it is a suiting, um, it would be a lightweight suit situation. Um, so think of like when you go into Ann Taylor and you pick up one of their like skirts or it's the lighter weight of all of those. But it is really nice. And this is what it looks like with our, like if you made a suit out of this and then a briefcase out of this, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know a, a boxy jacket and like it doesn't have any I mean it has a little bit of wearing stretch to it you could make a close fitting dress out of it and then wear this as the jacket over top it's just thin you know what I mean so that's why I get nervous about making it into bottoms or making it into some kind of dress or skirt jumpsuit with like a loose fitting pant would be really cute 
and the drape of it, yeah, the drape of it would hang heavy. You know, it's heavy enough to hang down and have like weight to it, but still flowy and drapey that it would feel good and look good, blow in the wind and all that kind of stuff. But these are like a perfect match. Um, I thought maybe that blue there, but no. This one has too much of an olive in it. So that's a no. All right. This is 17353. Three. If if I don't if you don't know what gabardine is, I would at least order a swatch of this so that you can have it in your swatch stash so the ne next time you see a pattern that calls for this, you can kind of visualize it a little bit better. It also looks really good with this, I bet. Yeah, I love those two together. Or even this maybe. If you wanted to go that route, I love it. I'm actually loving it with all of these orangey browns. Because, you know, green and orange are kind of, I don't know, complementary or whatever. I mean, green and red are, but like teal has blue in it and orange has yellow in it, right? Isn't that why those, uh, those of you that know color theory, feel free to chime in here. Um, but yeah, that's why I like it with those brownie colors. Okay, this is a tartan plaid cotton shirting in teal. So your traditional cotton shirting, right? Um, in teal, this does have a little bit of like a brushed quality to it on the one side. This side does not, but this side does. So feel free to use whichever one you want. And it's teal and black, um, no stretch and very little drape. Uh, this is one, two, I'm sorry, one, eight, two, four, eight. It's a little bit brighter than this gabardine is. A little bit more green. I mean, it does look good with this, but that, I don't know. If something's speaking to you, maybe the lining of your bag? Okay, this is, what is this? Soft slub raw silk noil or noil, is it like, no, there's no E on it. So it's gotta be noil. Solid, a uh, shirting and teal. Silk, silk noil. It comes in eight colors, soft slub. Okay, so soft is describing the hand feel. Slub is describing the texture. It has like little bumps all over it. Almost looks like it's been pilled. And then raw silk. I mean, I have never, to my knowledge, touched a fabric like this. It feels, I know you're picturing silk as being silky. This is not that. Maybe because it's raw. Maybe that's why it's playing tricks on me. So raw silk is not the same as cooked silk. <laughs> What's the opposite of raw silk? Uh, um, it feels like cotton if I'm being honest. Um, it's very lightweight. It's got a good amount of drape, but still some body to it. Yeah, very interesting. So this I would make into blouses, any kind of like lightweight flowy dress or skirt. I don't know about anything super fitted. There's no stretch to it at all, either direction. And it is a little bit like slightly opaque. I'd be comfortable wearing it this way, but if you're someone that's super conservative and like you don't want anybody to see even an ankle showing through, um, you might want to line it. But the feel of it is, I don't know. It feels like cotton. It feels like, I mean, it is a natural fiber like cotton is. So I guess that makes sense, but I don't know what noil is. So I'd have to do some research on that as well. But I mean, it feels good. I think it would make a really great, even like a somewhat of like a boxy top even, or like a button down that has some volume to it. I think that could be good. I think it would hold up to like a bubble sleeve really well. Yeah, I mean, I could even see it in a jumpsuit or a pant that was like very loose fitting or like wide legged. Um, cause it does have, I mean, it's lightweight, but it does have some weight to it. Not nearly as weighty. Well, let me see. No, the gabardine is definitely heavier. Um, 
but yeah, it's got some heft to it. So this is 18153, and again, they have it in eight colors. That one's unique and different, something that I don't normally see. So that's piqued my attention for sure. This one is silky polka dot rayon woven, okay, in teal and rust. So rust was our other jersey, which was this one, nope which was this one. Nope. Oh, oh, here it is. Do those look alike? Yeah. Okay. Um, this is, okay. So it's a rayon woven. It doesn't say what type of woven. It's very tightly woven, which is why we're not getting a ton of drape with it. And it's also kind of a little bit heavier. Um, it's kind of like rayon twill, but less refined. <laughs> I don't know if that's going to be very helpful descriptor. It feels very smooth. Think of like a lining. Think of like Bimberg rayon lining, kind of like that, but heavier. Um, so I think it would make a stunning blouse or like blousey dress, you know, gathered situation with a gathered skirt or whatever. And then you compare it with this, this t-shirt, they do look really nice together. Yeah, this just is, um, it's kind of like papery. You know how like linings can be kind of papery? It's like that. 18265, it's not bad. It's just, if you had handed this to me and said, what is this? I don't know that I would have said rayon. I probably would have said polyester to be perfectly honest. Um, but I mean, it would make a cute outfit. So I'm going to leave it at that. Okay. Finally, for the teals, we have a layering rib cotton sweater knit in teal. I don't know what layering, is it just maybe meant for layering? Is that what they're suggesting? Oh, wow. Very stretchy. This is the cross green. This is the straight green, stretchy that way too. It's it's definitely, okay, so our other rib knits have been a little bit silkier and smoother. This one has some grit to it. Like these two things are gonna stick together and not wanna move around very much. Um, but the color is really pretty. They're calling it teal, but it's definitely more of a seagrass, like somewhere in between seagrass and teal. The color is really pretty. It would be perfect for spring as well as fall. Even winter, if you're calling into like the winter blues, um, really, really pretty. But yeah, it's a little bit grittier, a little bit, um, yeah, just not as silky, but got great stretch to it both ways. It would make a great, you know, anything with like a turtleneck, close, high up neck, anything super close fitting, even with negative ease, I think you'd be fine, not too much but a little bit of negative ease would be good. Um, yeah, close fitting dress, pencil skirt, any of that kind of stuff. All right, ooh, look at this one. Okay, we're into the blues. This is Distressed Animal Print Rayon Poplin in Denim Blue. Look at that colorway. Now, I'm not like the biggest, biggest fan of animal print personally. Um, not for any good reason, just just not. <laughs> um, but this one with the blue and the yellow, I don't know. That is fun. This one is rayon poplin. Okay. So we've got the rayon fiber, the poplin like weave for lack of a better word. Um, it's, it is somewhere between a chalet and a twill in between those two. So if you don't like chalet because it's too lightweight, too shifty, too whatever, and you don't like twill because it's too heavy, too structured for you, poplin might be a good middle ground. We're still gonna have the drape to it, but it is very feathery, feathery, lightweight, like very lightweight. Still smooth though, like rayon is. I just love the colors of this, so fun. 18037, we did have this yellowy wool I mean, those look really good together. I'm not entirely sure that you would just make a shirt and a jacket and wear with denim jeans. This is a denim-y color. That would be a stunning little outfit. 
but then you, I, I would want to find at least like five outfits <laughs> that I could wear with this before I start making like this bright yellow jacket. Um, but the colorway is, is right on. It's right on. Okay, there's that. And then we have, uh-oh, I picked up too many. This is a jersey, I think. Um, yeah, abstract marbled floral rayon jersey knit blue. This one comes in another colorway too. Um, and so does this one. This one comes in two colorways. Actually, so does that polka dot, that rayon polka dot. This one comes in another colorway too. These next few actually all come in two or more colorways, but this is um, abstract marbled floral rayon jersey knit in blues. So think of like t-shirts, but rayon. So light, lighter weight, thinner, but all the icy ice queenness of it all happening here. 17807. Very drapey, very lightweight. Decent amount of stretch both ways. This is soft hemp cotton chambray shirting in denim blue. Um, hemp cotton blend into a chambray in the colorway denim blue, I think is what we're having here. So is she, yeah, it is soft for a chambray, right? Especially for a hemp um, blend. Um, hemp can be very kind of granola-y. Uh, this feels very soft, not a lot of drape to it. It looks the same front to back, no stretch. No stretch, um, just your a new take on shirting, on uh, chambray shirting. One eight three seven one on this. Now we have a soft pencil stripe French terry jersey and denim and cream. Now this cream is a little bit more beige to me than cream. Cream to me is that vanilla y white color. This is a little bit more brownish yellow, um, but it is French terry. So we've got the, you know, loops in the back, nice and soft. And then our stripes are, the blues are all the same size and the creams are all the same size, but the blue and the cream are not the same size. So if you're someone that's very particular about your stripes, ask me how I know. <laughs> I might be a little picky about my stripes. Um, that's how this one breaks down. It does have, this is on the cross grain and this is the straight grain stretch. So stretch both ways, not a ton, um, but mostly these are gonna be, you know, for your super soft, almost like a sweater knit, but it's French terry and not sweater knit. Um, so this is 18465, very drapey, very drapey. Unlike that first, remember our very first fabric was a, wasn't the very first one a, Nope, sweater knit. The vintage rose was vintage rose. Yeah, nope. Hold on, here she is. This one was also a French terry, but remember it was backwards where the print is on the terry part and you can see the difference in the drape there. Kind of a lot of difference. I don't really know why, but there you have it. Now, this one's pretty. This is a wide plaid cotton twill shirting in denim and camel. Denim and camel. This is more of a cream to me, where the other one is a beige. Like, this is more beige, this is cream. And this one falls to me a little bit more in the beige category, but there you have it. So, this is wide plaid cotton twill. Cotton twill is the same thing that denim is made from. So, think of lightweight denim. Um, yeah, lightweight. I'm not sure of the ounces, but lightweight. She might even have the ounces on the website. I'm not sure. Not a ton of drape, no stretch. So this would be good for any of your like button down dresses, something somewhat close fitting, even like a trouser, a pencil pant, pencil skirt, any of that kind of stuff. Boxy tops, lightweight jackets. I mean, cotton, twill, You. I mean, you could make anything from anything at all. 
Um, this one just has this really cool wide plaid in the like darker blue and then these lighter beige colors. This one is pretty. This is Tapestry Vine Floral Rayon Jersey in Knit Blue. We've talked about Rayon Jersey at length in this video. So now we'll just talk about the print on this one. Very lovely. Again, somewhere in the middle between being a full on like cartoon illustration and being a photo. Um, this one kind of blends those two worlds perfectly and it has lots of colors in it. I mean, obviously we can bring out like our pinks or our rose and our burgundy. Um, this one is the, the, uh, what's it called? Corduroy. And then we haven't had any solid blues yet and no creams yet either. And there is some like golden yellow. So like something like this could work also. This was the, um, crinkle cotton. Yeah. So that's a fun play on colors too. So 18642 on the rayon jersey, and this one was 16960 if you did not write it down the first time. All right, next, solid navy, uh, washed linen twill, bottom weight. Uh, this is a staple, it comes in nine colors. Nine colors plus, so sometimes there's more. So it is a bottom weight. It is a, it is a linen, but it's also a bottom weight linen in a twill weave so we've had cotton twill this is linen twill um so yeah think about your paper bag waist shorts or pants this would be ideal for that because it has the drape that you need for something like that it's not super stiff um, but it is weighty enough to hold up to going around all those curves and a crotch and all of that kind of stuff um but yeah linen twill no stretch but it's got like a lovely lovely drape to it a decent amount of weight to it in this you know classic navy color 16697 this is one i think a lot of you guys will like this is wide stripe hachi knit sweater hachi sweater knit in denim and cream it comes in another colorway Right, very classic, very Americana. The Hachi knit is something that you may have seen before. It's like easier to see actually here. See how it has the almost like uh, chevrons? It has the, that's Hachi knit. Um, very lightweight, but very holy, like very loosely woven. That's what makes it kind of lightweight. And then it's gonna have a ton of stretch to it. So this is one of those things that you're gonna make uh, like a looser, think of like when you go sailing, that's the vibe I'm getting. Um, you want like a looser fitting um, sweater because you kind of want to be warm, but not so much because you're working a lot, I guess. I don't know. I'm making up all these scenarios in my brain. But, you know, very, very nautical, very like beachy I'm getting from this particular one. But Hachi Knit is great because it is breathable because it's so holy, but also a sweater knit. So it's kind of warm too. So it kind of toes the line between those two things. Um, and we've got the denim and the cream again, which if you wanted to do plaid, no, that's not it. If you wanted to do stripes and florals, no, that's not it. Okay, no real match for this yet. This is, where are we? Wide plaid, we did that, we did that. Hachi knit, okay, pinstripe ponty knit. Pinstripe ponty knit in navy. So back to the ponty pant that you can wear to work um that feels like pajamas because it's so soft and smooth it's knit so it's stretchy so that's comfortable you're not gonna have like you know anything pinching you um but it's a pinstripe so it looks super professional um right i mean can't you see that looking exceptional either in like a dress form like think of fitted pencil skirt dress fit and flare dress you the ponty would make for a wider skirt though like if you did a circle skirt it would flare out a lot um so fitted skirt would probably be best ponty pants um pencil pants that same situation this would be lovely it just has a bit of a businessy flare to it um navy and cream again this one is one eight four six nine pretty decent amount of stretch on the cross green and a little bit on the straight green but 
mostly known for its smooth hand feel and like thickness. Okay, now we have another solid sweater knit. This is a navy one. Soft reversible sweater double knit in solid navy. Okay, so one side, I hope you guys can see this. One side has a slight rib to it. And then the other side is almost like a cotton jersey. So that's very interesting. Um, of course, the colors are the exact same. You could use either side or both. Can you guys hear the dogs? Um, it is very soft on both sides, very soft. It still has a decent amount of drape considering it's a double knit um, and would make a really, just really quality sweater dress, sweater top, cardigan, any of that. This is the stretch and sheerness of it as you stretch it out. That's the cross grain. This is the straight grain, hardly any on the straight grain. This just feels so nice. It feels thinner and lighter than it is, if that makes sense. Um, yeah, it just feels really good. I guess because it's a double knit, it's two layers, but both layers are very lightweight. So it just tricks you into thinking it should be heavier than it is. Yeah, really nice, really soft, really supple, really good. Oh, classic plaid here. This one is tartan plaid worsted wool in navy and evergreen. So if we want to call back our evergreen rib knit, if we want to call back our blue sweater knit, if we want to call in this maybe, no, that's a no. Um, I mean, right? Can't you just see this around the holidays? It's classic classic um however you wanted to mix this up crop jacket skirt shirt it would look great they all look great together um again it's the worsted wolves we've talked about that already and one eight two four five is the item number so again this one's pretty scratchy you're going to want to line it it's about as scratchy as this boiled wool is to be honest the other worsted wool was a little bit smoother this one's for sure rough rough okay now we have another is this ponty yeah vintage floral printed ponty knit in midnight i had a dress maybe this was probably 10 years ago out of something similar to this and i feel like i made it into a fit and flare like circled skirt because it is a lightweight ponty this one is heavier weight um i don't know how uh oh i'm gonna lose my sticker um if you guys can tell, not really. It is a little bit, it's trying, and this one's not trying at all. Um, because it's lighter weight, it would be more susceptible for some kind of circle skirt situation. Um, it doesn't have, I mean, it has some stretch, not a lot, but some. And obviously the smooth hand feel of Ponte, everything we've talked about before, but it, the print of it is what is most memorable to me because it's black with this very subtle floral print. It's almost like the floral print and then like a sheer black overlay over top of it. Like that's how subtle it is. Um, so if you work in an environment where you need to keep things not so bright and colorful, but you like florals, this would be a good option for you. Um, if you need to go somewhere where, like if it's like a cocktail party, I mean, it's like black tie, you know, you could wear this and it still have a romantic sort of vibe to it. It's a really nice juxtaposition, I think, of black, which is super harsh, and florals, which are florals. It kind of marries the two really beautifully. This is 18416. Yeah, although she's saying it's midnight, I don't know. It looks very black to me. It could go either way. It could go either way. Okay, next, this is designer stretch denim in deep indigo. So stretch denim, this is the denim stretch. Let's see, I'm getting about 10% stretch maybe. So good for not like a jegging, but like a fitted pant. Um, 
especially fitted through the hip area. If it had like one or two inches of ease and then you also had this stretch to it, that would be super comfortable. But it's just your traditional denim other than that. 18137. This is leaf plumes in rayon jersey knit. Again, we've talked about rayon jersey a ton. This one has that Miami Vice vibe going, right? We've got the blue in the background, but also some teals and greens and purples and even lavender and cream, like all of those things together. All right, super lightweight, super drapey, super soft, and a decent amount of stretch to it. Okay, 17497 on that. Page three, this is the last page as well. It's a full page though, so I don't think we're even close to being done here. We've got another interesting animal print. Again, not the biggest animal print girly, but the ones that we've seen, that one that was blue and yellow and this one, I could kind of see myself figuring out something to make with these. This is a linen blend shirting. So instantly my mind goes to like a fitted, like, you know, like a denim shirt would shirt dress, like a shirt dress. That's what I'm thinking of. Um, I love the kind of mustard color plus, is it black? And then this orchid purple color mixed in here as well. Um, and because it's a linen blend, it's not 100% linen. So it does have a little bit of a softer, smoother hand feel to it. It's going to be a little bit more drapey. I think this would be super, super cute. Um, it could go very fun and casual to very um, conservative, not necessarily professional because it is still animal print, um, but you could definitely go from like church to brunch and not feel over or underdressed at either location. Biscuit is dying to get in my lap. So um, that's why you hear her crying. But yeah, I like this one a lot. 18041 on this guy yeah love the colors there love i may i just really like purple i also really like pink and that's in there in the background as well another good one um this is lyocell which is that form of rayon uh twill bottom weight they're calling this colorway raisin which i think is dead on can you guys see biscuit oh my goodness can you let us shop please we're trying to shop in in private um <laughs> Lyocell Twill Bottom Weight. So where was the other, was it this, the Silk Noir maybe? This kind of feels similar in weight and drape to this, but much smoother, like much, much, much smoother. And you can definitely see the twill weave. It's reading brown. They're calling it a purpley brown raisin color, but it's, it's brown, um, which I remember seeing a lot of browns in the beginning of our journey here. Let's go back. These are all sort of still purpley. Mm. Let's see. Oh, maybe this marbly one. That's really pretty. Then of course, all of our like oranges would be a fun, like contrasting color. It wasn't any of the blues, maybe some of the greens. I mean, that doesn't look terrible. Um, this was here, this was here. Yeah, I feel like we saw a lot more browns, but yeah, it's reading like mm, hot chocolate. <laughs> Are all my references food? They might be. Um, so yeah, soft, smooth, a little bit weighty, a little bit drapey, no stretch, bottom weight. So I mean, it would be that drapey skirt, that drapey pant. Um, you could make it into a dress for sure. It's lightweight enough to do that, but it's going to have that drapey quality to it no matter what. Think of like, you know, those gowns that are like, they look like, met like melted metal. It would be kind of like that without any shine. Okay, um, that goes here. Next is romantic fall floral stretch sateen and plums. So we have not seen a sateen yet. Sateen, when I first started sewing, was my very, very favorite fabric to sew with because it had stretch. 
It had so it made it a little bit easier to fit. It had um, structure to it, so it made it easier to sew. <laughs> you can see why. When I did my royal wedding sew along, I used stretch sateen. So it does have a little bit of stretch to it. This is the cross grain and this is the straight grain. So not on the straight grain, but a little bit on the cross grain. So you can make lots of things out of stretch sateen, any fit and flare dress, any fitted dress, any pencil pant. Um, it's a little bit too structured for like a wide leg pant, I think. Um, there's not a lot of drape to it, but you can also make really great jackets. Sateen is such a fun fabric to sew with if you've never done that before. But again, tons of really great colors in here between this like, here's our rust t-shirt and then our brick corduroy. I mean, how fun is that? You've even got some lavenders and these like golden yellows in here. Let's pick this back up again. Uh, a little too green, this one is. Uh, I mean, I guess we could pick out our boiled wool again. Still, too bright on this one. But those reds all look really good um, with this. So, love stretch sateen if you've never sewn with it before. Give it a, give it a go. Uh, 17435 on this guy. Next, we have another waffle knit. This one is soft texture waffle knit sweater knit in plum. Our other one was this. And remember that one was called, oh gosh, can I find it? Let's see if it's easier to find by the number. 18257, 18257, marble dyed waffle sweater knit in wine and mustard and olive. So marble dyed waffle sweater knit, and this one is soft texture waffle knit. So they are different. And I will say this one is softer than this one. Also the waffles on this one are smaller than this one. Um, this one might be a little bit more appropriate to wear out. Yeah. A lot less holy just in its natural state. It's also got a decent amount of weight to it. Um, and a good amount of drape. So this would make one of those really fun, um, lightweight sweaters whether you just have like a normal bodice and sleeve or you have a little bit of a puff sleeve cap or like, I don't know, some kind of peplum or something like that, this might work really well for that. Any of your lightweight sweater knits, it feels super, super soft, like smooth and soft, even though it's got the waffle knit texture to it. This one feels, it's still, it's still soft, don't get me wrong, but this one's almost like a brushed soft, whereas this one's a smooth soft. I hope that makes sense but it looks really good with teal for what it's worth. Purple and teal seem to complement each other. They are both very bold colors though. So that would, that would be an outfit. <laughs> All right, this one is 18230. Okay, now moving into like our silvers and taupes, I guess. We've got this tartan plaid rayon twill shirting in cream and gray. We've talked about rayon twill shirting already. This one's similar to one of the earlier ones, has that same little bit of shine in it or sheen in it. Remember this one? Very, very similar to each other, just different types, uh, different prints of plaid. Um, but the weight is similar, the feel, the hand feels very similar, no stretch. But it has this pretty like muted colorway to it. So we've got the whites and the baby blues, but also this like literally like highlighter pink is in here. Um, and also the like golden yellowy brown. So really fun color, unique plaid. Um, we have, you know, like the traditional plaids, like I was showing you with those coatings earlier. Um, where's the red and blue one? Oh, this one. Remember, this is like super traditional, right? Which you see this and you think, okay, very common, very classic, all of that. But you make something out of this and people instantly, it catches their eye because it's a plaid, which is familiar, but a colorway that isn't. I have a dress that is a very unique colorway of plaid and I always get I'm always catching eyes with people. I'm always getting questions and compliments about it. And I, I, the only thing I can think of, it's not like a super exceptional design. It's just the colorway of the plaid just really stands out. And I think that catches people's attention. So this one's fun. One, eight, two, four, nine. Next we have, this one feels good. This is ultra soft marble dye sweatshirt fleece in camel and denim. Ultra Soft is correct. It's giving watercolor clouds. It's giving, yeah, marble dyed for sure, but in a very muted way. 
Um, this is the sweatshirt side of it, the fleece side of it. So very light, very muted take on a sweatshirt or a hoodie or whatever it will be. Um, super soft, super soft. Um, a little bit of stretch this way, a very little bit the other way. Um, it's just the colorway of this is just so fun. These two together, like, I don't know, that's not terrible. You know, if you wanted to like, <laughs> I, follow me, follow with me here, okay? If you wanted to make like a, you know, drapey type of skirt and then have like a cropped sweatshirt, is that weird? I don't know. Um, but they don't look terrible together, for sure. The browns kind of call into this yellow and then the blues and whites are similar. Um, that would be fun. But this is just a really nice, good weight, very, very soft sweatshirt fleece. This is 18220. Okay, now we have this fun one. This has got to be a crepe of some kind. This is Abstract Lines Rayon Crepe in Mocha and Black. So we've got the mocha color coming back. We've got the black and these abstract lines. This feels very ready to wear. Like I would see it in Banana Public any day of the week. Um, crepe we've talked about. This is a rayon crepe, so it's got some drape, lightweight, but texture. And the crepe does make it a little bit more structured, just a little bit. Um, it's not really a chalet. Um, no stretch to it, but it does have that taupe background. So that's something to be mindful of because of skin tones, really. Like this makes me look gray, I think. Like it takes all the color out of my skin. So you just have to be careful that way. But the abstract lines are really cool. 18269. Next, we have this plaid shirting, possibly. Yeah, autumn grid plaid cotton shirting in caramel and espresso. Autumn grid plaid. Yeah, it also has like a little bit of a slub texture to it. And it feels like thick. It feels like really thick. Either, I guess the fibers are thicker than usual, but it's a shirting, but it's got the browns and this brick color is coming back. I mean, tell me those aren't an exact match. So if you wanted to do like a little mini skirt and then a plaid top, these look beautiful together. Like they're dead on. That's really fun. And I feel like this makes this look a little more oh, I don't want to say feminine, but definitely like more light, like more easygoing. When I first saw this, I was feeling like I'm working out in the garden type of thing, like very, oh, but this makes it feel like a little bit sweeter, maybe. I don't know. That's an odd, I don't know. But then here it is with the rust knit top. And then this was the other jersey knit. I can't remember the color of this one. It's a little, a little yellow, well, not, a little orange. Um, here's like the brownest thing we've had so far was this. That's a little weird. Yeah, the best thing is this corduroy for sure. For sure, that's fun. Um, 18253. And I don't know if this is gonna soften up in the wash, but um, it's definitely got some heft to it. So it might be like for people that live in the Southeast, or like Southwest, um, I guess I should just say the South. Um, it might be enough where you wouldn't need to wear a jacket with it, you know, cause it's pretty, it's pretty thick. Okay, so that's that. Next we have Animal Spot Eco Vero, one word, Eco Vero, rayon twill shirting and coffee. I don't know what Eco Vero rayon is. Maybe some kind of organic situation or it's like registered somewhere, but it is rayon twill. So same rayon twill that we've seen a thousand times. This one does feel lightweight for a rayon twill and also a little bit drapier, but it's got this animal spot. So it's a little bit like Dalmatians, but in brown and black. And the background, the coffee part of it does also have a little bit of this cream coming through for sure, but it's still got the lightweight. Yeah, very lightweight um, for a rayon twill, more drape, no stretch. And the item number is 17649. So kind of like a fun abstract take on polka dots kinda. But brown and black is so classic, right? 
Now we have, what is this? Suede? Yeah, soft suede bottom weight in solid chestnut. This comes in six colors. I was almost gonna call this like velvet or corduroy, cause I mean, come on, doesn't it look a lot like this micro whale does? But it has a, it's definitely suede. It definitely has a suede type texture to it. The back is, on somewhat of a diagonal, like twill weave would be, um, but more like, yeah, micro suede upholstery, but way lighter weight. Well, lighter weight, but not as drapey. So I think you would use this interchangeably with anything that calls for velvet or corduroy. It feels very, very similar, just a little bit more drapey than the corduroy is and way softer, smoother, way smoother. But this is the colorway, what did I say it was called? Oh God, espresso? No, chestnut. And it comes in six other colors too. So I would probably check those out for sure. And it's one of those two where does the color change when you rub it? No, so there's no nap to it. So that makes it easy. You don't have to buy extra. Yeah, I like this one. We also have this really dark, rich brown. This is the Slub Texture Linen Blend again. This is in Solid Espresso. Or maybe this is the first time we've seen this. So this is a staple. They have 25 colors of this. The Slub Texture, which again is that kind of like bumpy texture, um, but it's a linen blend. And I think it's blended with rayon and cotton maybe, both of those things. So it is drapey, it is lightweight, but it's got, it's got some weight to it, you know? Um, for a linen blend, it's got some weight to it. Definitely enough to like hold up a pant, you know what I mean? It's not as smooth as the other slub linen we saw. Um, definitely doesn't even compare to this silk, even though this is slub as well. Um, it's smoother than that, but it is a little bit opaque. You can kind of see my fingers through it. But yeah, they've had this for years, it's always, always a good go-to for any of your like anything where you want it to be linen and like natural and breathable but also have a little bit of something to it a little bit of weight to it um this one is perfect so think of pants think of dresses all of that okay now ooh, look at this one this is a jersey possibly um tonal garden floral rayon jersey knit in vanilla and espresso. I just love the tone on tone of it all. It kind of looks like it went through a Xerox machine. <laughs> but rayon jersey, okay, so we've been over that. This one feels like, that's the straight, that's the cross grain, this is the straight grain. This one feels like not necessarily smooth. It kind of has a little bit of, a little bit of grit to it. Um, almost kind of like a crepe, maybe? It, it is not textured, like you can't see anything, but it does feel, it has a certain feel to it. I just love the gray scale, brown scale, sepia sort of vibe of it all. Yeah, and with the browns, the dark browns especially, that's what that looks like. Here's our next one. I'm gonna go ahead and start talking about it. It's a soft wool flannel suiting in espresso. I mean, that would be a really sharp outfit, right? If you had like a, like some kind of, it's a, it would be, I can't talk. It would be a t-shirt pretty much cause it's Jersey, but I don't know. It doesn't look like a t-shirt. Nobody would ever have to know. And then you can make um, like trousers out of this. Oh, how lovely is that? This is really, really nice. This is lightweight. What was the other one? This one, which was also a wool suiting. Um, let's move this out of the way. So these are very comparable in terms of weight. This one might be a little bit heavier weight. The hand feels the same. This is the drape on this one, little a little less drapey. Well, now that I say that, maybe it's a little bit more drapey. Yeah, a little more drapey on this one. Just, I mean, by a schmidge. Um, no stretch, really nice suiting. So. This is a wool suiting, this is a wool suiting. We also saw this gabardine, which is similar to a suiting. Um, these are also similar, but in different ways. 
similar in drape and hand feel for sure. Um, and then this one might just be a little bit heavier. So that's cool. This is 18174. Now we have this, is it a hound's tooth possibly? Tiny hound's tooth um, stretch wool blend bottom weight. This comes in uh, two colors. This one is olive and black. Stretch on the cross grain. Oh, that's decent amount of stretch for sure. Yeah, that's going out two inches. So that's 50% stretch. Wait, how big is my swatch? One, two, three, four, five. And then it goes out two, well, one and a half inches, maybe like 30% stretch. That's decent. Um, it is a micro pounds tooth and it is a wool blend. I don't know what else it's blended with, but the colorway is a little bit like green and navy maybe. I just love the stretch of it. I mean, that would make a really comfortable pencil pan, pencil skirt, fitted dress, any of that kind of stuff. All right. Ooh, look at this one. You guys are going to like this. This is Fair Isle Stripe Textured Sweater Knit in Gray and Plum. Textured Sweater Knit. So it truly looks like someone knitted this. And that Fair Isle is just so classic, but it turned on its head with this plum pink gray colorway. That's what it looks like on the wrong side. Yeah, I want like an oversized, slouchy, you know, situation. I want like a puffy vest. <laughs> I don't know where are these things, like I want fuzzy earmuffs. Like that's, I'm getting like ski lodge, but like Miami style, if there was such a thing because of the colors. Um, yeah, it's got a decent amount of weight to it. This is the drape. You know, it's pretty loosely woven, so it's going to have a, you know, not, it's not really stretch so much as it is give within the weave. So there's that. It does become a little bit, yeah, not a ton of recovery there. It does become a little bit misshapen. You can see how it's kind of wobbly now that I've been pulling on it. So that's why I think oversized would be better for this. One, eight, two, three, one. Next we have this, what is this? See You at Six, which is that brand name. Um, solid cotton ribbing in gray. And all they put was that it has various colors. They didn't put a number to it at all. So I don't know what that means necessarily, but it is a, it is a rib knit, but it is a fine, or almost like dense, maybe that's the better word, a dense rib knit. It's heavy. It's heavy and substantial. Um, it does have good recovery, but it kind of takes a minute. You know, it doesn't bounce right back. It kind of is like, I'm going to ease back into where I came from. Um, so that's that. These two things together would be really cute with like a fitted dress and then this over top. That could be a lot of fun. This is 17698. This is also See You at Six. You might recognize this print. They've had this in many different substrates. This is the Tropical Plants French Terry in Gray. So there's your French Terry. This one is, again, a heavyweight French Terry, not like the others we've seen. This one's, this one's weighty. Um, so this is going to be similar to your sweatshirting. Um, not nearly, there's like gonna be no drape. Yeah, no drape to this whatsoever. I assume they think these things go together. Uh, this is a little bit of drape to it because the, if they're the same brand, I think that they try and match up the colors as best they can. So do what you will with that. Maybe it was supposed to be this and then this was gonna be your neckline, something like that. You know, this would be the ribbing for your cuffs and collars that would work um but yeah very very weighty on this this is one seven six nine nine this is another moody fabric this one is moody animal print printed organic cotton double gauze and taupe this is our third printed organic cotton double gauze this is the moody animal print 
You can see it's got kind of like that retro, like staticky TV situation. Um, yeah, and it's got the taupes, but also kind of goes into a little bit of browns and you've got your oranges and blacks in here. There's also a bit of navy, um, kind of a lot going on, but fun for an animal print for sure, especially the cheetah type animal prints where normally the black and brown can be so harsh. I think having it on this taupe background is quite nice. This is 18069. And with this, it's a little light. Yeah, it's more of a grayish taupe. Okay. Next is this lovely wool plaid. This is Hound's Tooth Plaid Worsted Wool in Gray and Black. Another kind of classic colorway with the black and gray. We do have the yellow. It's such a small little thread of yellow though. It looks good, uh, but it doesn't necessarily like bring out that yellow. You kind of have to get close to see it. Same thing with the brick, looks good, but you'd kind of have to get close to see it. Um, and it is very much like a taupey gray again with the black um, and like a cream. So lots of fun colors in here. Again, worsted wool, no stretch, no drape. And this one's like, in terms of wools go, it's pretty comparable to the others we've seen. It is quite itchy though, quite itchy for sure. So you wanna line this, okay? Um, oh, and that is 18291. Now we have um in our last color category so sad these are gonna be the grays and i think we've got like 15 of them so don't go anywhere yet um fair no that is not true i lied we're halfway through the grays already how did that happen time flies when you're having fun this is classic midweight gabardine suiting and charcoal classic midweight gabardine versus this let me pull up the name for this again, 17353 in our teal section. So classic fine gabardine. This is classic midweight gabardine. So this one's gonna be heavier. You know, I don't, I mean, I guess I feel it in the actual like weight. Yeah, yeah, I feel it in the weight, but I also feel it in the body. Can you see how this one's just folded over completely and this one has a little bit more body to it? So for me, this would be like the spring gabardine and this would be the winter gabardine. So depending on where you live in the country, what kind of weight you're looking for in your suiting, um, you just have two options here. This one is called charcoal. There's also four colors of this. I mean, I do like it. Again, it feels just like what you would see in Banana Republic and all of their suits and all of that kind of stuff. So if you need that for your life for whatever reason, but it also just makes, I mean, there's something about having a classic trouser that you can pair with fun tops even, not even like businessy stuff, but you wear this um, with a sneaker even. I mean, the, the idea of um, business wear and business suits is changing a lot um, and people are turning them into street style really easily. It would also make, this one make an exceptional like vest. Think of like a long line blazer without any sleeves um, or just a long line blazer. This one may be really good. It has that kind of weight to it. This one's really nice. 17092. So you're fine and you're midweight depending on your needs. Um, then we have, oh, they've had this before in some variation. This is another reversible. This is a stripe dot double knit in charcoal and white. So two knits smashed together like double gauze, but knits instead of gauze. You have this like, I don't know, they look like uh, little Pac-Mans the Pac-Man ghosts. That's what they look like. Um, kind of scattered around the other side is a stripe. So this would be really fun for baby clothes, I think. I can see it in those little hats, you know, and you like turn the little hat up. You've got a little coordinating situation happening. That's really fun. Also great on pajamas. And if you wanna do the cuffs in one or the other and the binding in one or the other, that would be really great. 
um, lots of fun. You could even do like, if you have kids or you wanna make more than one, you could do one kid gets this, one kid gets that. Um, just make sure they don't start wearing them inside out and for the wrong person. <laughs> okay, this is really soft too, super, super soft. Um, it's very two very lightweight knits, so they come together to be pretty lightweight still, a little bit of body to it. And the stretch on the cross grain is decent. And then straight grain is no stretch. So this is 17940. I had really thought I was gonna get all this done before this light started coming in today, but I underestimate how long these videos take sometimes. Plus the sun is setting sooner. Oh, fall. Okay, this is soft brushed rib sweater knit in Heather Black. It comes in four colors. This is Heather Black. It is so, so, so soft and so fine. This is probably the finest of all of the, um, of all of the rib knits we've had. This is the, the most loosely woven loosely knitted version um, and it just feels, it's so brushed on this side, it feels so soft and then this side is a little bit more silky, but this is Heather Black. Heather Black? Ooh. Yeah, Biscuit says Heather Black. <laughs> okay, now we have this black and gray Ponty, tonal abstract animal spots, printed Ponty knit and charcoal. In comparison to our other Ponties, very comparable in terms of stretch and weight and drape and all of that. We are just getting a little bit uh, more muted of a print. This black on gray um, would be a great pencil skirt. One of those things that could be classic, but with a twist because it has animal print, you know? Really soft hand feel. That's really nice. Here's another Ponty, I think. No. This is a wool suiting, but this is a very, very lightweight suiting. Can you see how that's like, yeah, look at it, catch that air. Um, this is soft grid plaid wool suiting and charcoal. It's got a blue stripe, a cream stripe, and a black stripe all set on this like charcoal gray background. Very lightweight, like I said. Um, still has some structure to it though. So again, if you're looking for a lightweight suit situation, a lightweight blazer, a lightweight pant. Um, this is your, this is your go-to. Very similar to the gabardine really, um, but it's just wool instead. Um, Biscuit's back again. She just has to get in on the fabric. She can't help herself. Um, for what it's worth though, these kind of look pretty good together. I know that, that <laughs> that's a blue and this is teal, but you'd have to get really close to be able to tell those apart. Um, it is like a bluish teal. I wonder if any of our blues are this blue. Like it's blue, blue. You know, it's not navy. Yeah, no, I'm not really seeing any true blues. Like I think this one looks best, better than all the others. Better than all the actual blue ones. These look, I love a charcoal and a teal together too. Okay, so this one is 18280. 18280. Oh. No stretch. Yeah, really lovely. Classic little, is this houndstooth, I think? Yeah, houndstooth check stretch bottom weight in black and cream. So think of stretch sateen, but not sateen. This one is definitely matte. Definitely does not have the same smooth hand feel. It's definitely still soft. Um, but I, I, it'd be hard to not picture breakfast at Tiffany's with the pencil pant, um, and a black turtleneck. I mean, that's exactly where my mind goes with this one. Um, just a really, really classic houndstooth. It's very soft, pretty thick, I think. Um, yeah, you'd want to make it, want to make something pretty close fitting out of it to make the most out of that stretch. Yeah. Really soft, really heavy weight not a lot of drape, but not none, but not a lot. Yeah, this feels really luxurious, really expensive. 18018. Um, I could also imagine this in some like fitted dresses. What else? I guess like blazers and jackets and stuff like that. It's heavy. It's heavy. So you'd want it to be a garment that is meant to stand up to that weight for sure. All right, next we have, oh, this is a thick one. This is abs, nope, splat, spatter dot 
printed sweatshirt fleece in black. So someone literally took the paintbrush and did the little trick with the bristles and splattered all the paint on it. Gray paint, almost like a metallic sort of, not really, um, on this cotton piece and then it's fleece on the back. So this is your sweatshirt fleece. Um, no drape, should have some stretch. Nope, not really. Oh, that's the straight grain. This is the cross grain. Yeah, not a lot of stretch. So you wanna make sure to get a rib knit to pull it over your head um, or make it like oversized something or another. But yeah, it's a pretty, pretty hefty um, sweatshirt fleece. Yeah, okay, that is 18224. And then we have 17193. 17913. This is another Ponty Knit abstract marble printed Ponty Knit in slate and black. I'm loving, you know, how we talked about these were going to be like elevated basics. Um, and I'm really getting that vibe between like these, this Ponty Knit and this one. All the Ponties really have given us that sort of. I mean, Ponty is one of those things that's like really hard to dress down. You know what I mean? Like it just is so weighted and smooth and silky like you can only make a certain amount of things from ponty knit so um i love these kind of like muted like it's not like we're going full-on print but it's not a solid either it's somewhere in between so we're just taking things up one notch from where we've been the last couple of years that's fully represented in this collection i think um but this one has the pretty like deep 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 blue slate and black the wrong side is solid black um, and then the same amount of stretch as our other Ponties. It feels really a lot like all the other ones. So really good quality Ponty knit. And then this is our last one, guys. Last one. I think we're going out with a bang. This one is Abstract Spatter Dot Jacquard Double Knit. So Jacquard is front to back. Like it's, it's knitted, woven, however you want to say it. Um, so sometimes the... Well, brocade is the same way too, where the reverse side is the exact opposite. This one's a little bit more subtle with the way that it was woven, but it's got a nice little texture to it. Not a lot of stretch at all. Um, oh, it's a double knit, that's why. It's a double knit. So this is a different fabric altogether, smashed up with this top one. That's why you can't really see it. Anyways, um, not a lot of stretch to it, you know? So it's got some good amount of structure. If you wanted to make a nice sweater dress or like, a sweater skirt or a sweater blazer. Is it the Fulton blazer that I'm thinking of? <laughs> Is that name finally coming to me? Um, that's what this would be really good for. It's, it's kind of organic, but also organized, you know, like it's not crazy. It's not polka dots. It's not, you know, this is also spatter dot, but th this one seems more organized to me than this one does. Um, so if that is your aesthetic, a little bit more clean, this is the spatter to go for. Um, so this is 18207. So I'm just going to pile these up for you so you can get one last look. There's our collection. Well, there you have it. Autumn Elevated. What do we think? So, so many oh, just gorgeous, gorgeous fabrics. As always with Stylemaker Fabrics. The quality is exceptional. You can feel it, you can see it. You know, when you sew with their fabrics, you know you're on a different level than some of the other retailers. Um, they also, like I said in the beginning of the video, the collection is live on their website now. They do a $5 flat rate shipping for the next couple of weeks, discounted international shipping along with that. And they're also doing sort of like a highlight tour. Um, so head to their Instagram, at Stylemaker Fabrics to see some more of that. But if you've made it this far and you've seen any of these videos before, you know we like to play a fun game at the end and it is how many swatches did you write down? So whatever your list is, however many swatch numbers you wrote down, leave it in the comment section below. There's no prize for the winner other than you have great taste. <laughs> but that is gonna do it for me today, y'all. Thanks so much for watching. I can't wait to see what you got from Stylemaker and what your fall wardrobe will be looking like. Bye.